Hey gang, this is Layla here from the Comic Connection in Hamilton, Ontario with this week's comic book reviews. First up, we've got Star Trek Countdown number two from IDW. In this issue, Ambassador Spock pleads for the survival of Romulus with the help of Captain Data and Ambassador Picard. But the Vulcan Council isn't too keen to help. Uh, I enjoyed this book. It was pretty decent art uh, and it had a pretty catchy story. I'm a little interested to see how it's going to tie in as far as being a prequel to the movie. Um, but, you know, all in all, if you're a Trek fan, you're probably going to like this book. Next up, the Obama Mania continues with Youngblood number 8 from Image. Uh, there are two stories in this. There's an Obama backup story and then the main story. First, we'll talk about the Obama backup. Uh, in this issue, President Obama reviews the members, the members of the Youngblood Squadron before introducing them to the world. Uh, the art was uh, really gorgeous for this backup story, but really is just sort of a fluffy, not much of a story thing going on in it. But for an Obama appearance, it was pretty good. And then the main story, a uh, father fights to save his son's life. Uh, meanwhile, the Youngblood team battles the Televillain, which was really kind of lame. I didn't like the story at all, uh, but the art was okay. So it was pretty much what I expected to uh, see in the book, but uh, the Obama appearance was really good, so for that, you should pick it up. Next up, we've got New Avengers number 50 from Marvel Comics. In this issue, the Avengers set a trap for Norman and the Dark Avengers, but they are then um, themselves attacked by the Hood and his army. Uh, they narrowly escape and decide that they need to take the fight to Norman in the media of all places. Uh, I really loved this book. It was really, really good. Uh, the story was awesome. The spiny dialogue was hilarious. Uh, I didn't love all of the art because it was done by various artists, but uh, for the majority of it, it was pretty good. So not a bad New Avengers issue. Definitely a worthwhile read. Next up, we've got Savage Dragon number 145 from Image, once again with Obama featured in the book. Uh, in this one, Savage Dragon returns to serve with the Chicago Police Force in an attempt to beat back the Vicious Circle, which is like a gang that's been growing in power. Um, meanwhile, on the flip side, President Obama takes a, makes a visit to Chicago and asks for Savage Dragon to be part of his security detail. Um, but all doesn't end rosy. This is a really solid story. I was actually kind of surprised and I really liked the art. I, I enjoyed this issue. So if you're looking for you know, a really good Obama appearance, it was only a couple of pages. But if you're just looking for a solid book to read from Image, this one was pretty good. And last but not least, we've got Angel number 18. Uh, I haven't reviewed this book in a long while, um, but here we go. Uh, Angel, with the help of an old friend, reopens Angel Investigations. Um, but are his new clients really in need, or are they just stargazing? Uh, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, the new writer, Kelly Armstrong, who is a Canadian fantasy author, so make sure to check her out. Um, it's just awesome. She really got the flavor of the series that I remember on TV, which I really enjoyed. And uh, the new artist, Dave Ross, was pretty good too. Um, this is a real step up for the whole Angel series. So hopefully we're going in this direction because I really enjoyed it. Hey folks, uh, Jim here with this week's comic book reviews, which for me are 100% Obama free. So let's start with Land of Oz, Return to the Emerald City, number three, by David Hutchison, based on the book by L. Frank Baum. In this one, Glinda has found a way to challenge Ginger's rule, the lost princess Ozma, but only Mombi knows where she is. Um, another fantastic issue by David Hutchison. This is the best, and I do mean the best, Oz adaptation you'll find on the market today. And I'm not saying that to bash Shan Hour's uh, Oz book for Marvel, but this is the very best. Next up, Maximum Ride, Volume 1, written by James Patterson with art by Nara Lee. In this one, Maximum Ride knows what it's like to fly, but when Max and her flock get attacked by the mysterious school who take their youngest member, it's up to Max to try and save her. Um, as you guys know, I really loved the uh, first couple parts in Yen Plus, and I was really looking forward to this uh, trade paperback. This is a fantastic book. I loved it a lot. If you're a manga fan, try this out. You'll like it a lot. Next up, Ninja High School number 167. Yes, I know, I said I was not going to review any more NHS because I was taking over the backups. Well, guess what? The backups are going to become in their own book. So you can look for that a little later, probably this year. Uh, in this one, Ricky and Anna are reunited with Bob, Feeple, and soon Ricky, Sora, and Bianca, Rob's, uh, Robbie's adopted mouse da daughter, are on their way back to Earth via a series of dimensional jumps. Another really well-written but underwhelming issue. Um, 
I didn't really feel the emotion for the reunion between Bob and Anna, but uh, otherwise, it's okay. I mean, Bob, the art by Ben is great. And last but not least, Maximum Dinobots number three, written by Simon Furman with art by Nick Roche and Marcel Marceau. Uh, in this one, in what's left of fallen Nevada, the Dinobots call a truce just in time for Scorpinox Headmaster Legion to attack. Uh, another really nice issue of uh, Dinobots. Um, I'm really liking the, where the series is going. Simon Furman, as always, is one of the best Transformers writers there is in the world today. Another really good issue.